Yeah, I dropped down to about 39 kilos, which wow. was quite low. You could see bones and it wasn't the most attractive thing in the world. I thought it was okay in a way. Yeah. It's really strange because my mind was functioning. I just never felt good enough, essentially. I couldn't see any value in myself. I'm a waste of life. I'm a waste of a body. The only other option was lose more weight and die. Do you have suicidal thoughts? Did they help you out of the disorder? They fed me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Almost four sweetie. What I've been taught and which has been a complete game changer for me is just focusing on performance, improving performance. Like who cares what you look like? So with R and T, the body is something you need to nourish and look after, but it's your soul, your mind that is what matters and what counts, because that's what's gonna create things. I gained back my 10 kilos, which yeah. was a miracle. I just feel empowered, I feel strong, I just feel like a different person. I feel like I am someone on a journey to go somewhere now. It's given me so much confidence. It's given me confidence in myself, in my appearance. Yeah, like R&T literally saved my life. Okay, so Shruti, take me back uh, 18 months ago. What were the series of uh, trigger moments for you to kickstart this amazing R&T journey of yours? Um, so... Um, I reached out to R&T just because I um, just needed a bit of a helping hand. Um, I was... I just gotten married um, and things hadn't been so good. Um, and I guess I just needed to try and do what I could to try and fix what I could to try and make them try to make the marriage work um, and move forward um, in the direction that we wanted to go together. So things had started to go wrong. There was. Um, I guess it was a distance that was created between us um, and it was partly due to the loads of reasons, but part, one, of the, part, one of the issues was I felt that there was a lot of, um, I had a lot, lost a lot of weight um, and that had kind of got me in a position where um, things weren't going so great on, let's say, a romantic level um, and also you know, having kids was one of the, you know, high, like priorities on our agenda. Um, and I, my weight had gotten quite low to the point where I wasn't having my periods anymore. So obviously the fertility was an issue. Um, and Why was your weight dropping? So I guess like over the course, over the course of the relationship, um, I guess... Uh, I can start further back in the sense of I had um, an eating disorder when I was younger um, in my teens. So now I'm 36. So it's been quite a while. So I had treatment for that. Um, but I think anyone who kind of knows a little bit about it will know there's always kind of a predisposition to kind of deal with stress or have certain underlying um pressures on yourself to look a certain way or be a certain way let's say so um I guess the during my relationship um there were certain things that were happening that made me feel that I needed to look a certain way um so I'm not too much of a kind of Instagram kind of person um but um I happened to be with someone who was um and um so yeah so I guess you know what does that mean a long person, yeah. so you know just kind of looking at appearance like having a, a focus on appearance and looking a certain way um so for example like I was in pretty good shape um and so when I used to get I, you, I would get complimented to say you know oh it's oh, you know, you look like, you. I love your flat tummy or, you know, um, I love, like, I like the way you look essentially. Um, and then that along, coupled along with liking the way I looked in certain clothes, um, which would potentially expose my midriff, would make me feel pressure to kind of make sure that that's kind of stayed flat. Um, and then I think the more that kind of made me kind of restrict what I ate. And then the more I 
like kind of lost weight along the way. I guess initially when you lose weight, you tend to see a little bit of muscle come through the, through from underneath, right? So you get to see those flat abs and everything. So then you think, oh yeah, this is pretty good. Um, but then you continue, then you continue to go in that direction. Um, and I guess I, in order for me to do that, um, I was running a lot. Um, and so by running a lot, obviously you're if you're not eating enough, then you're kind of wearing away your muscles, which I've learned since having joined RNT. Um, but basically I started losing muscle, me losing weight and muscle everywhere else as well. But as that was happening, um, I kind of like got positive feedback about it. So then it encouraged me to continue. Um, and then, and then obviously, you know, things in our relationship developed and then got, then wedding planning started happening. Um, and then, you know, family kind of noticed that I was losing weight and I had some comments. And so, but then that would be defended to say that, oh, everyone loses weight during the wedding. So then it would make me feel like, oh, you know, that's okay then. So, okay, I might be losing weight, but I seem to look okay. And I seem to be still attractive to that person. And, you know, it's been justified. So I just keep on going. And I think that again, anyone who knows about when you going down the trajectory of losing weight after you've reached a certain point, it's the way your mind thinks is very different about that way in terms of you start to start almost um, get fixated Mm -hmm. on keeping that weight low and not necessarily even the number but more just that flat belly and it's hard to then accept gaining weight because you just focus is that it's all going to go in that place and you feel like that's what is making me attractive right now so therefore I don't I can't put on more but that was kind of coupled with um obviously you know um if if um someone that you're with is also into fitness um, and then there's also comments being made about dietary restrictions for themselves. Wow. So like, you know, basically avoid carbs. So you're being told to avoid carbs. They were avoiding carbs, avoiding. but that got into my head because yeah. then I felt like, well, if they need to avoid carbs, then I need to avoid carbs. So it just got into this really unhealthy kind of mindset. And so where I was always watching what I ate, um, it became more of a sort of, like I just, I wouldn't eat, like I would just, I just stopped eating carbohydrates. It was, mm. um, and then obviously that affects your energy levels as well. Um, but I think that from the person who was saying the things, they weren't necessarily doing it themselves because I think they had a better understanding of it. And I think from my end is that I believed that um, because there was an understanding that it would have been like, I would it would um, kind of been translated to me in a better way. Why was his um, Why was his opinion so important? I, I'm I have a like I don't have the best confidence in the world anyway. Um, I've always had that since I was quite young, which I think is what kind of drove. I've had like I used to feel inferior when I was younger as well, which probably drove my initial eating disorder at that point. Um, and so I always felt like potentially, you know, he's better than me. Um, so if he was attracted to me by being smaller, then that's what I was going to go with. And um, yeah, like if, you know, if, if that's, you know, going like, yeah. So if, if that's what was going to get me there, then that's what I'm going to go along with essentially. And yeah, it was just... I just wanted to be accepted and I wanted to be desirable. Um, and like where, you know, if, if that person is also um, kind of, you know, known to be like, you know, like um, what's the word, you know, when someone's kind of, um yeah they're doing well kind of thing and people are thinking who's that person going to be with that, that person's so great like you know they're working out they look so good at the gym they look great on Instagram like I wonder who they're going to come back with this is sort of stuff I'd be being told and then subconsciously that would get into my head and be like 
who am I? Like, you know, I need to look good. Like I need to like live up to these expectations. How do I do that? And then all I knew how to do that was to just like just be slim. Um, and because obviously like sometimes um, that, well, that those were the messages that I was getting was that being slim is good. But I think that the translation for me for being slim is to lose weight. But now I've realized that actually to be slim and to be have a good body composition, yeah. it takes work. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I used to work out. I used to do weights and everything. I did, I focused more on cardio. So I did weights, I did cardio, but I wasn't fueling myself. Mm. How much weight did you lose? So I lost about 10 kilos. Um, well, yeah, probably about eight, eight to 10 kilos during the relationship. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I dropped down to about 39 kilos, which wow. was quite low. Um, and it just got to a point where I was just like, if I'm still functioning, then what's, you know, it's fine. But things like were, there were telltale signs, like, you know, my clothes weren't fitting. Like <laughs> I was trying to get, trying to wear jeans and like everything was kind of hanging out. So then I'd have like, my jeans were hanging off me. So then I'd have to wear like leggings and, you know, just stupid little things like that. Um, and you know, you could see bones and it wasn't the most attractive thing in the world. Um, but I just didn't know. I just felt trapped to be honest with and you. What was going through your mind when you were 39 kilos or continuing? I thought weight? it was okay in a way. Yeah. It's really strange because my mind was, fo was, was, fo was functioning. Yeah, yeah. So my body was kind of slowing down. Um, but my mind was functioning. So I was always cold. I was low in energy. Um, I was always feeling sick, um, like nauseous and, um, but I was still like working full time. Like I was still functioning in a pretty good position in my job. Um, I was still driving, like, you know, we, we moved to, we were moving to Australia. So I was still driving that process. I was on the ball. I was getting everything done. Um, but my body was like, obviously just struggling a little mm -hmm. bit like you know I would want to like I used to be playing my nephews were like most important thing in the world to me so I'd be like wanting to play with my nephews but I'd be sitting there this is so embarrassing but I'd be sitting there with a hot water bottle <laughs> yeah because yeah, I couldn't let it go because I was just so cold all the time like and it's cold in England but it was to a degree where it was just it was it was getting silly I couldn't play with them properly and it it just it wasn't normal and, and was that your trigger to start Ooh. My trigger to start, my trigger to start was when I felt like our relationship had just hit a, a complete bar, like it just hit a wall. Like it was just, you know, we couldn't, we just weren't able to, um, we just weren't able to be together. Um, and I thought if I'm going to be able to fix this from my side of things, my, I, I've got feeling that from my side of things, the th main thing that I really need to do to fix this is to imp put on some weight, get some energy, fix my fertility. Um, and yeah, just kind of be, start functioning as myself again. And also just like eating normally again as well. Like it wasn't great. Like, you know, you, I'd go to functions um, and there would be things that I'd be restricting on. Um, and it, you know, and it wasn't because I did... I didn't want to have it. It was more just because I felt like if I eat this, mm. I'm going to like my belly's going to get big yeah. and then I won't be attractive to that person anymore. Um, so then I can't have that right now. What was happening when you were 39, 40 kilos? Were you getting, were you still getting that positive feedback loop of yeah, keeping it was, weight? Or? So no. So then it was really strange. So I'd kind of highlighted my concerns during the weight loss period because I felt like it was it's a very contradictory thing it's a really strange thing like I could feel that my weight was coming down and I could feel like that this is a problem especially because obviously periods stop like a little bit before then anyway um and I knew because of my history like I knew all the dangers that come alongside that so like I know about like um you know even like your bones getting weaker and all that stuff and for me like physical fitness is like the most important it always has been like since yeah. I was young it would just I just like working out going to the gym running like it would just be constant and it might have initially started off as trying to lose weight but in afterwards it just became a way that I've 
kind of cleared my head and functioned every day. Like it would just be a way for me to, you know, that dopamine hit you get, like that was what it was for me. It's like, and ever since then, and, and it's and it's improved my life, but like to work that way rather than doing anything else. Um, but um, where was I saying? Sorry. Around, were you getting a positive feedback loop? Yeah, sorry. So, um, and then you yeah, so as I was, yeah, so, yeah, sorry. So, yeah, so as I was um, losing the weight, I did highlight that, you know, I'm getting worried about this. Um, and there wouldn't be that much engagement in it. It would it would be, like, acknowledgement and, yeah, okay, like, yeah, yeah. eat more. Um, but there wouldn't be too much engagement. And I still, I was, I think I didn't feel so confident that if I did, like, if I did put on the weight, is that person's still gonna like me kind of thing um and um and you were newly weds at this point right we were engaged at this point oh, okay. yeah the marriage doesn't even happen. so no no <laughs> yeah that the wedding um wedding was being planned at that point um and that's kind of when things started getting you know not so focused on us and just more focused on a wedding and i think maybe the awareness of health and thing and the relationship might have gone a little bit off track looking back was there was there actually a relationship going on like i don't know that's <laughs> I mean, sound a bit no, strange question, yeah but. i understand what you're saying that it's strange. like there was um but it was <laughs> it was kind of being masked to a degree um because it was all it's all a bit strange like we, because we were kind of together and then when things opened up after covid um family started getting involved and that's the time the engagement happened as well so the focus kind of we had like where we felt was a strong relationship um when i guess the real world started coming in um things started to change um and i guess i thought that if you're good together like and you're spending all this time together, then that's solid. So then nothing else matters. But actually, I hadn't taken into account that some, you know, those outside influences might have a bigger influence on on a person than, yeah, you know, than just being who they are to a degree. So um, yeah. So in terms of the positive feedback, it kind of is intertwined with that in the sense that as soon as kind of um, and other outside opinions started coming in, that's when it kind of, the penny dropped of like, oh yeah, you are underweight. This is a problem. Mm. So I was getting positive feedback up to the point of like, maybe after we were married about the way I looked. Um, and then as soon as um, like other people started kind of having an opinion that, you know, oh, there's a problem here. She looks very underweight. Like, is there an issue? Um, that's when the negative feedback started. Um, but it came from externally. Yeah. Um, this sort of behavior is just, it's just crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. When you're saying it, I'm like, I can't, I can't imagine this even happening. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really, str it's. And if I just take, if we take it back, like, say, 20 years, where did this, because, because obviously you're in this situation where you said you, you were trying to impress yeah. this guy. Um, where did that come from? That this need to like please to please and yeah. have, make make people feel impressed. Yeah, I've just I think I've always had a little bit of that personality in me when I was younger. But um, I've always it's like since I was like in primary school and secondary school. Like I I loved primary school. That was like my favorite era when you just don't care what anyone thinks. <laughs> um, and I was into everything. I loved like doing all my dance and my gymnastics and all that sort of stuff. And then his sec secondary school hits, and I went to an all girls grammar school. Um, that's always a little bit more competitive. Yeah. Um, and then um, yeah, and then I guess during that time, um, I guess I felt like I needed to be cool um to kind of like and no one ever made me do this this was just me like I wanted to be cool I wanted my sister to think I was cool my older sister like you know I wanted my friends to like I wanted to be accepted in the cool crowd and all that sort of stuff so that would be and also I felt like you know 
I, I'm not very competitive. So I felt like pushing where I wanted to go in school, it just wasn't my thing because I just felt like I was going to get knocked back all the time. Mm -hmm. So then I went down this other route and the friendship group that I was with were kind of more into boys and things like that. Um, but I was wanting to be in that group, but I didn't have the confidence to be in that group. So then I would be on the sidelines and I just, I think that just fed my inferiority complex that I had. Um, and then also, I also have this thing where I kind of feel like, uh, as long as that person's happy, it's fine. Like, mm. I'll take the hit. It's kind of thing. Yeah. So, so in that sense, I'd be like, you know what? Like, I'll do what that person wants to do and what that person wants to do. Not because I don't have my own opinion, because I feel like uh, I can handle it. Like, I'll, I'll like, I just won't do what I want to do because I can handle it. Like, I'm the bigger person. But actually, what it did was fed the fed my inferiority, and I just started losing my confidence more and more under that. Um, and then, yeah. So obviously, you know being the one that wasn't you know um it's like like being on the sidelines let's say of um you know like being with boys and you know that whole kind of um dynamic um that kind of fed that, that kind of to the eating disorder. started yeah I think so um it was just never felt good enough essentially like I was just never good enough I wasn't good enough um with for my friends I wasn't good enough um at like at school like I just couldn't be good enough even though I was always doing well like I just never felt like I was good enough like I couldn't be enough to be good for my parents like I just I wanted I just wanted to impress them I wanted to be this amazing person and like the more I tried to be this amazing person for them I, I think I was looking two sets forward and I just wasn't able to get there like I wouldn't focus on now and then I just I just missed steps and I just could never get to where I wanted to be or wanted to go or maybe it was just in my head and I just felt like I wasn't yeah. good enough well, a lot of it is in our heads right uh, yeah all these sort of perceptions that we have especially around our parents yeah um, and how did you feel you so you had the eating the eating disorder started when what so age? that was when I was 15 um okay. so that was at GCSEs. Yeah. So my like I, I was losing weight. My poor mom, <laughs> she she struggled because at that time as well, all this sort of stuff wasn't so big. Yeah. So like she just struggled. She was like going to the GP, basically like very persistent to be like my daughter needs help. Um, and then I got um I got some help. Um, and that was basically meant that took me out of school for about a couple of months. Um, and that was my GCSE time. So then I had to do less GCSEs in order to kind of accommodate that. Um, they they did well there. So I got, got to obviously um, a pretty dangerously low weight then. Um, but then they dealt with the kind of reasons behind it. Like, you know, you have different therapies and things um, to try and dig. And, and find what do they, what do they find it. out? Um, so I think a lot of, I think some of it was as as simple as just not feeling good enough yeah. um, and feeling inferior. Um, and it was also just me, again, it was just me trying to impress my parents. Like my, the problem is, is like, I'm so, I'm so privileged. Like I'm so lucky to have the life I have and to have the parents I have. They are like the most incredible parents and they've been through the hard time like I'm I know you've probably spoken about before like you know they've come from a different country they've made it from the bottom to where they are right now they're so self-sufficient like you want to be that person who can be as good of the as good as them and just give back to them like they've sacrificed all this for you let me be the one to give you something back now let me make you proud let me make you show let me show you that everything you've done and like you've created is great like yeah. let me do that for you and I just couldn't do it <laughs> like I just felt like I couldn't what do did it. you have in your mind that was like you needed to do I to, just to needed to proud. be good at like you know like at school like you know I wanted to be like the best gymnast like I wanted to yeah. be the best at sports like I wanted to be in all the plays that were going on I wanted to be like you know the um 
like, was it house leader like you have in school, like that sort of stuff. But I just was just like hovering under the radar the whole time yeah. instead. Um, so what are the, um, the, the therapists and what, what therapy did you do and what so, did the therapists say? So it's interesting, like they did, like, because it because I was a teenager at the time, yeah. they treat adults and teenagers, like adolescents okay. separate differently. Yeah, yeah. So like they did creative therapy. So you just do like artwork and like explore just like an outlet. Um, and then you'd have like group therapy. So then you'd like share your experiences. Um, and then you'd have like family therapy. Um, and then you'd have just um, one on one just talking as well. So like there was quite a lot in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess like doing that makes it might make you sound like, wow. <laughs> But at the same time, getting it at such a young age also makes you really self-aware yeah. because you've had to do quite a lot of work on yourself at such a young age. Um, so, yeah. So, like, yeah. So it was just when I was at that stage, I got to the point again because I was quite hard on myself as well. When I got in there, it was just about I just need to fix myself and I need to get out of here so then I can start studying again, so then I can do my GCSE, so then I can do my levels and I can get and like start just get out and start being better. So like I always want to try and be the best. So then I did nail that one as well and got out quite quickly. But um yeah, it was it's it was interesting what came out. And I think um with yeah, so like one of the things is obviously trying to be the best and trying to impress your parents and trying to be as be as much as you can for them um but also like i think sometimes when with certain i think with families it's really difficult like i think it's so hard to be a parent like i really feel for people like i just don't think i don't know how anyone can get it right but it's just like communication is so important i think when you're a parent but obviously in different generations communication isn't always so open. Mm. So like, you know, people will maybe communicate with their children the way that their parents communicated with them, if that worked out well for them. And then they don't want to change that because that's all they know. Or sometimes people will want to communicate more because they feel like, well, my parent didn't communicate with me. So then I want to engage in this. And sometimes it's just about your personality and who you are. Yeah. So, um, you know, if you're not getting that positive feedback, you don't know if you're doing good. So if you're not if you're not getting from your parents that you're doing great and and you're as needy as me. Then... As long as it's not an ulterior, to mo ulterior motive of that feedback, like you've learned in the other uh, it, relationship scenario yeah yeah well yeah exactly yeah you don't want it to lead into bad a, a bad behavior how, how, yeah. how do they help you out of there like out of the, dis the disorder so it's they just they they basically just they fed me really <laughs> yeah almost four sweetie <laughs> pretty much yeah it's 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 um yeah it's it's quite um it's quite an in, it, it's it's a very interesting kind of um place to be because you're so you're basically in this internal battle constantly where your mind knows something but there's something in you not letting you do that. Mm. So even though you want to like it's just food like you just need to eat it's not hard. Yeah. Um you will find ways to try and avoid it. What did you it. see on the plate when you looked at the food? What did you see? Um, fat. I'm oh, going to get fat. I'm I'm going. I'm fat and I'm ugly and that's it. If I have this, like you know, everything else about me is crap. Let me at least have the fact that I I can be thin. Like I can't control how I look. I can't control how other people see me. But the thing that I can control is having a good body, which obviously it's not a good body, but, you know, I guess it's something that you can do something about. Um, and it just, and then it's as simple as that. It's not as crazy as people think. Yeah. It's not well, such that's... a, it's not such a weird thing, but it is literally just something that, okay, let me be good at something. I'm going to be good at not eating. Like, I think it's I'm... an important <laughs> message to share though, because a lot of um, girls now growing up, are struggling with this. Yeah. So this might resonate with a lot of parents listening to this podcast who have girls from the ages of, I don't know, five to 20. Yeah. Um, who who are exposed to, like, I don't know if you ever came across the thing on 
in the news around TikTok and they they had this really crazy they were, they were basically using the algorithm to push fad diets uh. and uh, girls especially were fueling it mm. I can't remember the exact thing but I just remember yeah. thinking like that it was just very toxic diet culture yeah. that makes people look at food and think yeah that's fat on this hit on the plate yeah. and, and as someone who's got a girl on 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 my way yeah. I do think about these things. I think yeah. more about like... It's so important to be aware of these things. It's like, I. it's just important to see the warning signs of getting there. Like, you know, you mentioned the TikTok. I couldn't wreck because I just... That's one of the reasons I don't like social media and Facebook as well. Like, not Facebook, like social media because... I don't want anything to get into my head. Like, like I feel like things like TikTok can be well, very toxic. It's all depending like, on how you use exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah, depending for on how sure. you use it. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And I'm learning to use it in a like positive way. Yeah, yeah. So I've opened myself up to it. But I know there was a period in my twenties, and I was just like, mm -mm. So like when, when you went into your twenties, you you had the experience in your teens. How 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 was your relationship with food? With it was, all these other new things like so relationships, alcohol, yeah. going out, etc. How did that? How did that all? It's um, so it's a sad thing. So it's probably it's quite it's quite a typical thing. Um, but after like you've kind of had the massive restrict, it's quite common to then go into a kind of binge restrict cycle. Yeah. So like bulimia is kind of a, a natural progression, um, because you you want to you want to like eat like a normal person um but then you either can't control it or you punish yourself because you did and so then you need to get rid of it so it's either going to be you know your standard ways of purging so it's either going to be your vomiting or it's going to be like, over exercise so you know sometimes you do both sometimes you do one like that sort of thing um so I was good for a few years like where I was like really good like um and then um, I like tend to have a pattern like <laughs> once I get into a relationship, those sort of I start putting pressure on myself. Um, and depending on who that person is that I'm with, it'll either go in, in a certain direction or it will be well controlled. So um, at university, um, I had a, like I had a pretty there was someone quite level headed um, and encouraging, so it wasn't so bad. Um, but initially at uni, um, because I'd come out of the grammar school um, and I'd felt quite um, like I'd had to put my personality aside because I feel like once you've set yourself up to be a certain person, it's really hard to become someone else within that same group. So I kind of just felt stuck as that person, um, like quiet one, yeah. the one that, you know, just is in the background kind of thing. And then went to uni um, I was just like, okay, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to go out there and just be loud and be who I am kind of thing or just put myself out there essentially um, and kind of went in the other direction. Um, so, you know, I was quite, um, let's say, um, social um, and open to, <laughs> to interactions. <laughs> um, so <laughs> kind of went... Read between the lines. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I kind of went a bit crazy in that direction and was like, you know, you know, just your normal kind of freshest thing. But I think I kind of maybe went a bit too far in that yeah. direction as well, um, of drinking and stuff. And, um, and then I met someone, um, and then that, well, actually, first of all, doing my antics of a first year got me into trouble, lost a lot of friends, um, <laughs> became a bit of, um, an outcast, um, then I kind of met someone, um, who wouldn't necessarily be in the same group. So, um, so sorry, I'll speak really quick. Um, yeah, basically he was like, you know, you know, basically, so I'm Hindu, he was Muslim, you know, that same old story. Um, <laughs> um, and yeah, so that, that, that kind of, kind of took me through the rest of uni. So I had a good experience at that time, but obviously that was heartbreaking when that ended, when I finished university and yeah. And then I went into my, and then I started working. Um, and then my twenties was a lot of just going out and drinking and trying to get over the heartbreak. And then, yeah. Did you fall into any bad habits with the food yeah so then there would be a lot then there would be the binge restrict binge restrict yeah, yeah. cycle started again after that um and then that kind of lasted for quite a few years 
Um, and my poor mother had to be yeah, yeah. like, he's the only one who understood it. I think I managed to get backs up of a lot of family members because it was frustrating for them to see. Um, so that, but then it kind of, for me, just, I felt like I understand the reason I'm doing this and I just wanted acceptance, but it's not, no one's, it's no one's fault that you can't understand it. Cause it's a hard thing to understand. Like when you look at it, like from the outside point of view, that person just looks like they're being selfish and just, you know, obsession, obsessive. And they're not looking at the bigger picture. Like look around you, look at what's going on in the world. Why are you obsessing about something so stupid? But it's something that you are looking at everything. You are aware of everything. You're living a normal life, but I hate myself. <laughs> so I need to do this. Like I need to punish myself somehow. Like I need to, and I, I need to like, I'm not, what makes, and you know, you get into these kind of um, self-destructive habits. It's like, who am I to eat? Why do I deserve food? Like, you know, there's that kind of element of it comes into yeah. it as well. Um, wow. So. What did your mom say? My poor mother. Um, she, she's just always supported. She just a bit. She just reassured me when I needed reassurance. She just kept trying to encourage me to like, just accept myself. And you know that was that was pretty much all she could do. Um, and basically just make me not feel like I'm like anything bad. Yeah. For do for being who I am. Um. And like, you know, just giving me the positive reassurance in life because I was functioning quite well. The thing is, through all of this, I was doing quite well in life in terms yeah. of professionally because yeah, yeah. I, I always had to do well in like at, at work and things. Um, did, it never, did it never impact your, your work? Because obviously you've smashed it in your career. Yeah. It, no, because I, I, I don't know how to be honest, but in a way, I know I could have done better. But if I didn't have this hang up, these hang ups, um, so it limited me in a way, but I got to where I needed to go. Mm. Like, you know, I would I would push myself as hard as I needed to go. But and but the thing is, that's where because you're not restricting so much like you are binging. So you're getting the fuel. Yeah. yeah but it's not in, a wild it's not in the right way. Yeah. yeah so you've had like 20 years yeah. of it's basically this pattern that you've described as happened for 20 years already. Right. Yeah. It's been strict. Um, guys, bad guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, confidence issues. Yeah. And it, it repeated itself every couple of years. Yeah. Up to this this moment where you thought, right, enough's enough. Yeah. At that point, were you thinking, right, th I need to break this whole cycle? Yeah. And walk us through starting this journey because I remember our first phone call and you explained uh, where you're at, and yeah. I remember thinking this is very different because most yeah. people come to RNT to lose weight. Yeah. Um you'd come to regain control of your health yeah. and you needed to gain weight in order to do that, mm. which is a very different um, circumstance. But talk us through the process of how did you find coming into the journey and and why was this time different in terms of your um, approach to it mentally and physically? Yeah, I guess this time I felt like there was no other, like I had no other choice. Like I was so stuck with where I was, everything, like, I can't, I, like, there was no other path, like, like, I just, I needed to, there was only one direction I needed to go in, I couldn't even see it getting low, like, the other, <laughs> without being too extreme, like, for me, the only other option was lose more weight and die, like, <laughs> there was, there was no other option, like, it was either that, or put it on in a good way, because I'm not going to, go back into a, one of those unhealthy ways of gaining weight yeah. and I just didn't know how to do it. Do you have suicidal thoughts? In any at that time no so I've had suicidal thoughts when I was at university and like to in that first year when I had my when I went a bit nuts um, and yeah so like at that point did you know you did um, you know try it was just a a paras it was just you a paracetamol OD. Yeah, it wasn't anything, you know, you do you have a bit too much paracetamol with some alcohol and um that wasn't great. Um but then my sister um was on the other end of the line after and she was just like, what would that do to mom and dad if if, that, if anything happened to you? And ever those words forever ring in my head. So I would never ever 
yeah. since that time, I wouldn't. In, what what drove you to to that point? At that? Just hated myself. Just it's just one of those things. I just really hated myself. I couldn't see any value in myself, um, and I just felt like I just needed to not be here. I just felt like um, like it's I'm a waste of life. Like I'm a waste of a body. Um, and so I just like, I thought like, let me go. So then someone else can have this life or someone else can get a go. Um, it sounds stupid, <laughs> but that's kind of like where it was. Um, and then like, yeah, like now, just to say like now, like I am not anywhere near that place. And we're going to get to that where you are so... now. <laughs> People probably listening to things. Hopefully there's a good end. I know. <laughs> but... Talk, talk about the the process. Of what, why was this different? Yeah, uh, I, I, I caused that tangent. There. Sorry, that's my fault. <laughs> no, but no. Why was this uh, um, different? Like coming into this because so you know. yeah, like I didn't have a choice. Like from our like the marriage wasn't going great. Um, it was only like there was just it just wasn't going anywhere. Um, it had to yeah. get fixed somehow. And my last ditch attempt to trying to fix it, like so yeah. from my point of view, I put on weight, fix relations, and fix your fertility and things will be better that's the only thing I could think for doing from my side um and that was that was it like I was literally pleading with you I was like literally please <laughs> please like I I need to bring back I need to bring back my libido I need to bring back my fertility like I I need I need I need help like I need to learn I need to I need to know how to get great gain weight in a healthy way um and because I am who I am and it's nothing to do with like, you know, having my old hang ups, I just I do want like just like anyone, like I do want a good body, yeah. but I want a strong body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I don't want to put on like a ton of unhealthy weight. Like I want to I want to be well nourished. I want to be strong. Like I want like, you know, it's like one thing putting on weight. But then, you know, you need to then have a good life after that. Mm. You know, if I was blessed enough to get my period back and have a child, I need to look after that child. I need to be in a good position. I just yeah. need to be a better person. I need to be more functional. Like, I just need to get my life back. Um, so what did you, so how did um, you find um, actually actively gaining weight and how much have you gained so far? So I gained, I gained back my 10 kilos, which yeah. was a miracle as far as I'm concerned it's like like this is something that I say like all the time but and I, I, I tell my mom all the time like like you know, R&T literally saved my life like being at that weight like I generally genuinely I was on the cusp of like uh, like I I feel like I was on the cusp of death, to be completely honest, because it was a very low weight. And I know that when I was at that low weight, when I was 15, like it was lower at the time, but not that much. I was told that, you know, your heart's going to give in on you or like, you know, just like it's not good, basically. So if it was going to go in that direction, that would have been it. But like that, you got like... I was so like, I know I needed you. Like I, I knew, I knew that I needed you. Like people would probably say, oh, you know, try this counseling or get a dietitian. That's not what I needed. I knew that's not what I needed. I needed, I just, I needed this, like everything that you guys gave. Um, because I be like, it was just a full understanding and education of just a good life and well-being um, rather than just folk fixating on one area and then another area. That doesn't put anything together. Um, but, like, I'd, I'd done that. Like, I've done that that kind of thing before and that didn't fix anything long-term. Whereas, like, you know, I've, I've gone past that stage now. Like, I, I, have, I have the head. Like, I have a little bit of maturity in me. Like I know what I need, but I need help. I need guidance. Yeah. Like Why R&T specifically? Um, I'd seen R&T. So that there was someone uh, you, um, at work. Um, so I don't know if I'm allowed to say names yeah. or... Okay. So um, Gita, um, I used to work with her and um, she had an incredible transformation. I think like loads of people have seen her transformation. She did amazing. Um and it's just really inspiring. And just, I know, and then obviously since then, um, one, I know that, you know, 
know what you're doing <laughs> and two it was just then I started like you know seeing more like I would like see like what on the website um and then like you know listen to podcasts and like you kind of kind of got a, a more a better feel for what you have to offer um and that's that's pretty much what kind of like hooked me in and I was just kind of like this is the only way and I'm being honest, if you hadn't accepted me, I I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't know what I would have done. Like, I don't know where I would have been. I don't know where I would be right now. Right. Like, I genuinely feel, and I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about, like, God and stuff, like, but I genuinely sure. feel that you were introduced into my life. Like, the timing that you were introduced into my life was literally, a, it, God did it, like, you know, she allowed me to contact you at the time I, she did and you were willing to take a shot with me. Um, and then, you know, everything that transpired over the year to come, guys got me through every single thing. I would have been completely alone and for my, based on the way things were, I probably would have fallen apart. Like there was, I had nothing. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, but I'm come out so much stronger and it has to be from God. Like it has to be like, there's just no other explanation. And yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's the, that's the reason I kind of came in the first place is because I, I knew, you know, you knew, you knew your stuff, but as the years gone on and the more I've kind of looked into it and the more I've been involved in the process, it's just so far more than what I even had even like. What about the process has been so uh, powerful for you specifically F just everything like there's just so much it's it's hard to break it all down but like um it's it's stuff that you talk about all the time sometimes oh. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> but it's like literally just the um like okay so the actual like um I guess um what's the word found foundation maybe you want to call it is like your structure system strategy right like it really is everything <laughs> like you know it it fixes so many things just having that in place it allows you to get somewhere you don't want to stay in one place you want to move forward like you know I'm so I was so fed up of not moving forward I know I have so much to offer and I don't want to keep on going around in circles here. Like I need to get there. But how am I going to get there is by actually doing something and keeping consistent with it. Like consistency. You guys have taught me consistency is the key. Like, yes, <laughs> stay consistent. Just carry on and you'll get there. And it worked. And having and community, huge. Like it's such a big deal. Like the um, coaching calls, the cohort the the like the podcast like the podcasts are massive like he hearing everyone's story like I think I've listened to all of them <laughs> I listen to every single one like in my morning every morning like I still need to do my little run and like Ivan's very like convincingly cut me down like I used to run 10k every morning really? and that was just not good yeah I think that's one of the reasons I lost so much weight as oh. well because that was my coping strategy yeah, yeah. um and also I just felt like I'm not good at anything one thing I can do is run let me run <laughs> fast or no so it would be I, I got I got decently fast like I've done like half marathons and stuff with decent time I don't time myself because like, so, I as soon as I start putting myself in a competitive situation oh, okay. I break apart, I fall apart. So, um, but it was, it's a decent time. I used to run before work, so it couldn't have taken me that long to do that. Um, but yeah, so I know Ivan's been telling me to stop doing cardio, um, but I have to keep it for my How mental sanity. Cardio? Now I've cut it down to 5K. Yeah, it's, um, it's better. It's a lot better. And it was a whole lot for me to let that go. Yeah, it took me big. to ages. It took me like probably a good six months at the beginning wow. <laughs> to actually let it go. Um, because it, like obviously the first three months of it, I was still in my marriage. And then the second three months of it, it was a lot of other stuff going on. And then only after that and listening to podcasts is and multiple people saying, trust the process, trust the process. I was like, yes, trust the process. Okay. Yeah. Trust the process. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going to like give me results and that's what's going to make me get somewhere. So, um, so, so talk about where you are now. What, what is your relationship with food like now? 
What's your relationship uh, with your body like? It's so much. Life? Okay, yeah. So I ha- yeah. So one of the things that like I have like I know at the beginning it was it's a it was it was a difficult um, decision to allow me to come on board um, and like trying to get someone to gain weight when they're in not a great place. Um, it oh, is it's like opening a can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you're getting. But like I, I like I said, like I knew where I needed to go with it and I knew that I was going to engage with it. Um, but yeah, so gaining weight is hard, like men, like psychologically to allow it to happen. It's hard, like because you don't it's scary. You, you've got to really trust someone because you've actually made a lot of effort to lose this weight. <laughs> it just sounds silly, but yeah, you have. Um, and then to trust someone to say, all right, just do this, do this, do this, gain a load of weight. Um, and then what? You know, you've still got that thing. Because you, once you get to a low weight, your confidence is not good. Like yeah, yeah. you're circling in dangerous territory when you're at a low weight. Um, so you've still got that fear of, okay, if I gain weight, like what if I'm, what if I look like crap? But like your mind's still thinking aesthetics, right? Whereas what happened? So I don't know if I'm answering your question. Yeah, kind you of are. Going so it's off. like, what's, go, go through it. Like, well, what happened actually when you gained it? Because yeah. I'm curious in a way, your relationship with food, your body and your mind is now. So essentially, I guess the main point in that is just that it went from, okay, I need to avoid certain things yeah. to I've got targets to meet. And it's such, and, and that, mindset for me that's interesting yeah. is i feel so great that i feel like that mm. it's like okay um i need to meet these macros like i need to meet this calorie intake which you know like it's not and they're not in in like kind of um strict way to a degree it's more just like you know make sure you don't have less than this or you're not going to get where you need to go like you know and 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 what i've been taught and which has been a complete game changer for me is just focusing on performance, improving mm-hmm. performance. Like, who cares what you look like? <laughs> that, so with r and and like a combination of that, and I've been doing some yoga as well, is just kind of looking outside and like the whole, yeah, I went on my yoga meditation retreat, which I've done a few before. But anyway, it's just kind of like looking at the bigger picture, like the body is something you need to nourish and look after, but it's your soul and your mind that you need to, that, is like is what matters and what counts because that's what's going to create things and that's what's going to like you know get you further in life and that's what actually ma- that's what matters kind of thing so it's kind of your body matters but it's also carrying something that can achieve more kind of thing like it's hard to explain that but um but yeah, so now it's kind of, and, and actually what well, that's what other thing that RNT did sorry I'm skipping back and forth but that's the other thing was that actually um managing expectations huge it was a huge huge thing like with Ivan telling me that it's going to take you for 18 months to two years to build muscle and yeah. get and get where you want to be I was like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> so where like before I was just like under the impression that and just the education the education is huge that you guys have. Like it makes the biggest difference. Like before I was trying to, I was, like I said, I was working out, wasn't fueling, doing cardio. It was all just like counterproductive. Mm-hmm. Nothing was really happening. Um, was just getting myself into a worse state. Whereas the education you guys give like, okay, you need to build, you need some fat to fuel the workout, to gain the muscle. Like it, that makes sense. My mum's been trying to tell me this for years and I will not listen. Mum's always no. Mum's no. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 I'm just going to get back. No, no, that's wrong. Um, but yeah, it's just like it. And like my strength has gone up so much. I had a level of strength. Then over the course of my relationship, my strength just dropped. Yeah. Like I like I lost all my muscle, like literally <laughs> lost all my muscle. And I went back to such a low baseline. Um, and then. You, go on. So yeah, no, I'm. Just, I was just gonna say, like, I, I'm finally back there again because what, I'm. What do you think when you see yourself in the mirror now? I feel, I feel like I've got a way to go, yeah. but um, I feel, I feel, I just feel empowered. I feel, I feel strong. Like, I just feel like a different person. Like, I feel like, I feel like this. I not not just this hope. Like, I feel like. I am someone on a journey to go somewhere now. Like I 
like it's given me it's given me so much confidence it's given me confidence in myself in my appearance like I just like I'm not even thinking about the way I look physically like you know my face or my you know anything else I just want to be strong now like I don't care if I have a flat stomach or not anymore like you know I will probably be nice to but like in the moment like I don't care like I just want to be strong and getting those like meeting like getting PRs and stuff that's just it's so exciting and it's so empowering and it's just like and and it and it just spills over into every other aspect in life like like it's given me so much confidence like starting from like scratch in Australia like I had to fight my case to become anything out there um and just like stay keep my head above water but because I had the confidence that you guys kind of gave me by by supporting me to have faith in my just by you having faith in me and then giving supporting me to have faith in myself that I can get there and never giving up and just keep on guiding me in the right direction made me feel like okay if any even like everyone else might think that I'm not anything nobody knows me I have no family I have no friends my you know people I work for don't really know who I am yeah. then you know no one really has any kind no one's backing you <laughs> you've like, you've only got yourself to back yourself to get anywhere but just having that kind of, um, just that that re- that um, kind of routine, that structure, um, getting stronger in myself, like just keeping level headed. It kept me level headed. Just having this whole, just getting stronger in myself, and then that gave me the confidence to back myself and think, okay, well, actually, and it's actually a really cool journey in the sense that where I felt like I was nothing. Like I've had to dig deep to think, okay, well, I need to make something of myself here. They're not convinced I'm anything. I am something (laughs) like, you know, like I had to then have belief in myself. And actually once I dug a little deeper, I was like, you know what? I am this and I am that. Like I do have good qualities and I do have things I have to offer and I do have things to give. And that's only come as a result of the support that you've given me like I would not like I would not be in that situation had I not had you there like I can't explain how much you have not just saved my life physically but just took taken me to the next level to actually make me get to such 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 to actually move forward in life like I could just be stagnant I could just be okay like you know all right great you know you've put on weight or whatever but I feel like I know so much more. I feel like, like I said, the strength in me as well. Like I feel more able, like I'm trying to increase my capacity to do more in the world. And by giving me more energy and kind of, I, I, I can now, like I can, I, I can start to like, I can just basically get somewhere in life. I see a vision. Like I said, I can know I'm moving forward. Like I know I'm going to get some, now I'm going to achieve something. I'm going to be more than I was before. Like Amen. before I started the journey, before I started my whole life, like in my whole life, I'm going to be something now and I'm going to do something, but it's going to take time. Um, but I will get there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, sorry. What would you say? No, no, don't apologize. At all. <laughs> no, no, apologize. Um, what would you say to the younger should the that didn't have any belief in herself didn't feel confident if you're speaking to your younger mm-hmm. self even a few years ago maybe what I, would you say to her uh, who was i would <laughs> i mean <laughs> I, I, I this sounds really stupid like at the baseline i would just be like just listen to you guys. <laughs> but, um, I guess more than that, I, I mean, I guess like if I'm looking at it from a different angle to who I've become it, who I've become is just like, who like, who cares what anyone thinks? Like just block everything out. Like just have faith in yourself and trust yourself. Like just like, yeah, just be who you want to be. Like don't try and be what somebody else wants you to be or know like you know yourself don't be ashamed of it don't hide it don't try and change it like just be proud and yeah just just be the best but yeah just be the best person and more more than anything I guess just trust yourself have Mm -hmm. faith in yourself um and I think that that would if I could do that and stick to that then 
it's just frees you a little frees you so much more and I guess then you don't then get influenced by you know other people's opinions of you as well so then like you know if I did just like feel like I am something before then you know I wouldn't have needed to feel like I need to I wouldn't have you know if someone else then said to me oh you know I like you slim I would have been able to say well that's nice for you but actually that doesn't feed who I want to be in life Mm. so that takes away from that and then if that means that I'm not the right person for you then so be it yeah kind of thing rather than kind of trying to feed into an unhealthy expectation yeah um this process for you has has allowed you to break uh, out of this unhealthy relationship you're in um what would you say to other maybe women especially who feel trapped in a relationship they they feel like they can't get out of i would just say i would just say first of all just do some self reflection in yourself um like just to find just I'd say just break it down, break down that relationship, break down those issues and look into yourself and think, what is it that's not right about this? And what, like, am I being, am I being true to myself? Am I being the best person I can be? Is this relationship pushing me forward into the direction that I need to be to reach my full capacity in life and optimize my life or is this taking me away from that direction and is this person is this is this toxic for me um and if if you if the truth of that is that this is toxic and you feel like you yourself are suffering and you're put and you're sacrificing yourself or you're losing yourself then have that conversation and if you want to make it, if you feel like there is resolution, have that conversation, put in strategies to see, like maybe that person doesn't know, put in strategies to see like, okay, can you be that person with that other person still being there? And to be honest, if you know that it's not going to work and you know that that can't happen with that person, life, we've been given this life and I don't don't to get all philosophical and like, I don't mean to be like patronizing or anything, but we've been given, I've, I've just realizing this, like God has given us this life on this earth to do what we want with it and to fulfill our potential don't waste it like that's another person that's your that was that chapter in your life there's another chapter coming afterwards like you can just have that com- you can just separate to make both parties be able to make the most of their individual lives like you have you have to break free of that and the the you know, it's limitless. Like life is limitless after that. Like the opportunities are just, you know, whatever you want them to be. So you have to just, just think outside, think what else is out there for you. And then you don't be scared to let go and don't be scared of what anyone else is going to say, because no one's going to say anything at the end of the day. And even if they do, what are they in your life for five minutes? They're going to have an opinion and then they're going to move on with their day. What are they having for lunch? You know, what are they doing that night? Whereas you're letting them influence you and like living in this like prison, like it's not worth it. Like you're just killing yourself for no reason. What's the one piece of advice you give to someone who's early on in their r and journey right now? <laughs> I have to do this, the classic, trust the process. <laughs> no, but genuinely, tr- just trust it. it. Just immerse yourself in it. Get involved with every single thing. Like, engage. Like, it was a game changer for me. When I started uploading the videos and actually really engaging with the cohort and, like, just with everything. Like, I'm, like, going to start with a coach. Like, get, if when I can make them the coaching. But it's so, oh, my gosh, it's so valuable. Yeah. Like, just get involved. Do everything that is on offer to you because, like, it's just, um, it's you, you'll get results quicker and you're going to open up, like, a whole new version of yourself that is just it's like is someone you never knew you could be but it's someone that you want to be like you know it's just just do it just listen to everything do it and just own it i love it thanks so much for being so open in your story should be it's been amazing seeing your transformation uh, journey so far and i'm excited to see how it continues to progress thank as you. the years come on thank you
Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you for everything. Like I, like I said, like I, I appreciate you inviting me here and I appreciate being able to talk to you about my story. And um, I just want to say as well, like, I don't know if I said it clearly enough at the time, but I just want to let people know that gaining weight is just as important as losing weight um, in terms of the um, health benefit, the health implications of it to a degree. And being overweight and losing weight um, is spoken about a lot more um, and is kind of maybe accepted a little bit more. But being underweight and needing to gain weight is not spoken about so much. And maybe people feel like it's subjective. Maybe they feel like, you know, they can't talk about it. Maybe they feel like, you know, they don't need to do anything about it or that it's not as much of a problem. But what I want, I, I just want people to know that, you know, it's it's very important and it needs to be addressed and there is a solution and there is an answer and there is a way to get there and there is so much more that comes along with that weight gain like bone health like you know hormone health just everything like it's it just like energy everything like it needs to be addressed and it can be addressed with you guys like you guys are very 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 you made it happen for me and you know exactly what you're doing with it and I just feel like anyone who's struggling with that it's just something they should definitely like have a conversation with you about and see if they can get anything from it because like it's it's saved me and it's been just changed my life so sorry I have to keep repeating myself but it has um but yeah thank you and thank you for everything and thank you for taking me on and just just thank you for your support and your guidance and i just I'm always going to be eternally in your debt. So thank yeah, you. Well, and I thank you for sharing your story. I think a lot of people who may not know this is a problem or may not may know someone who may uh, relate to this. I think will find it very very useful. And they hopefully can change that life. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs>